our next speaker. Here is Kara Sasson, one of my our very own um, uh, team members here at OHO. She's our digital marketing manager. She's worked in television. Uh, she's been a, tele a television journalist, a web producer in higher education, and now a digital account manager. Not a path she ever saw herself taking, but one she's enjoyed because throughout, she's been working with people and helping to share their stories. Having worked in higher education, she knows what many other clients are facing and is here to support you. Her presentation with a nod or two to Daft Punk is called Harder, Better, Faster, Punking Your Way Through Project Management. Kara, I'm gonna stop sharing so you can share your screen and take it away. Awesome, thanks Rachel and hello everybody. And here we are. And I'm just going to make you all small. It's been fun seeing you, but I won't see you again for a little while here. So, um, so yes, harder, better, faster, punking our way through project management. Um, so we're going to take a look first at who I am, but we're also going to take a look at not making your work harder, having better collaboration, getting to work faster, and making your team and your work stronger. And if you have the song running through your head, like I did as I was putting this together, then um, I appreciate that. And if you don't, if you're unfamiliar with Daft Punk, well then after this, you'll have to take a look. Their videos are amazing. Um, and it's great, just fun music. I put it on with my kids. So Kara who? Well, let me first introduce myself. Rachel did a, um, you know, offered some information about myself here uh, already, but want to share too that, um, so I worked as a web producer and social media specialist, as you mentioned, for um, a college at a tier one university for six years. So I was within the college at the university um, and I oversaw our uh, website. During that time, I went through two redesigns. So I'm very familiar with the process after that. I started in one CMS, I ended in another CMS. It was um, a, a, an amazing six years during that time. Um, and then I left there and I've come to over to OHO um, and I've been here just shy of three years. Um, next month, it's gonna be my, my third anniversary with OHO and couldn't be happier. I'm also a mom of twins. Um, this is Jackson and Campbell here in the picture with me as long, along with my husband, Scott. Um, I'm uh, our, my kids' school PTO co-president. So some of you may be uh, familiar with PTA or PTO, but ours is a PTO. Um, so I've been doing that for two years. Last, just last night was my last board meeting as co-president. Um, as mentioned, a former television journalist and I love karaoke and dancing. So just a little glimpse into my life, but. As mentioned, I also, you know, I never had that title of project manager before I came to OHO. So I, I, I never felt like a project manager. Um, I just got it done. And in fact, when my kids were infants, I remember this very specifically. I went to a pediatrician's appointment with them and he assured me, he said, you're doing great. Um, my, my children were born early. There were uh, some complications and, um, you know, there was a lot to talk about certainly. And he said, listen, you're doing great. And I said, well, you just got to get it done. And he said, well, you know, unfortunately not everybody does that. And so I, I just want to make sure that you know that you're doing well, which was really, it was so good to hear. I probably cried, um, but uh, it was, you know, it's just always part of my, my, my personality and my character traits of just getting it done. Um, and I've been making lists and working across, I put departments in quotes here because departments in terms of where in my life, you know, are we talking about departments in actual departments on my, my work work, or are we talking about departments in other sections of my life? So I've been making lists and working across these departments for decades. Um, and I'd really try to take a look at the big picture and plan ahead and make sure that we have everything that we need and know what our goals are and how we can meet those goals. So we're gonna pause for just a moment here and we have a, a poll. What about you? I'm curious of all of the people who are here right now, are you a project manager? So I think there's a poll coming up. I, do I have to launch that? Mm, maybe. Okay, well, there was a poll, but I'm going to, to pass, bypass that poll simply to say that option was yes or no. And the answer is yes, everybody. Oh, here we are, here we are, here we are. Okay, are you a project manager? 
Awesome. Yeah. See, I, see, I'm seeing this. I'm seeing this. We're going to end the poll. So three quarters of you consider yourself a project manager. Maybe it is your actual title. Maybe it is, um, maybe it's your actual title. Maybe it's how you look at your, your job, right? Are you a project manager? So I would say that so much of what we do every single day is project management. And it, um, it, it, like I said, it can be part of your job title. It can be, um, or, or not, it just is a matter of how you function, right? So take coming back to Daft Punk, we don't want to make your work harder, right? That's the first, first thing there in that song. So how do we handle requests and build relationships so that it's not harder? Well, we work together. You know, when working in higher ed, there are so many teams across the institution, right? We've got presidents, we got deans, we got faculty, we got um, HR, we've got um, admissions, student affairs, there's so many athletics. I mean, I could go on and on and on. I mean, this list here is just a, a mere uh, just snapshot of all of those different teams. Um, and being in communications or marketing, you want to be friends with nearly every single one of them, right? At some point along the path, on the, along the way um, of your journey, you're probably going to come in contact with at least one person from each of those departments, whether it is um, something that, that needs, that they're asking of you or that perhaps you're asking of them. Um, but when they're asking you in your um, job as a, in the communications office and in the marketing office, when they're asking you for something and they're making these requests, managing their requests and their expectations can be really tough because they don't report to you, right? So you might feel like, okay, these people are coming to me and they're asking me and there might be some, uh, you know, just some, some, some bouncing off of ideas, perhaps, and some conversations, right? And you, you really want to open those lines of conversation. So let's look, let's rewind in terms of how they actually ask for help, right? Because we don't, we want to make these relationships work. We want to be able to help them. How do they first ask for help? Number of ways. Email, in a meeting, perhaps passing in the hallway. Now I understand that this one might not be as common these days, but I can remember plenty of times going to walk to Duncan's to get a coffee and running into somebody from a department and then saying, hey, we're gonna start this program and we need all this information up on the website. And I'd say, great, let's schedule a meeting or let's get you, let's start answering some of these questions because inevitably, in that first interaction, you will never have all of the information that you need, right? So I know that there are some people on this call today who have set up intake forms where they might share out or even post on their website so that anybody who is interested can fill out a form. And it has all of the fields that they would need as the, as the person receiving the intake form as, uh, that they would need for information. And there might be some information that that intake form might be, you know, having to have a discussion about, or it, it might not be known at the time. So there might need to be a meeting, or you might just bypass that intake form from the very beginning and follow up with a meeting because truly having that conversation, building that relationship, introducing yourself to people, right? Because even if it's a program that's coming to you and saying, hey, we're, or, or that department that's coming to you and saying, we're going to start this program, there might be other people who are all around that, not just the one that you met in the hallway going to coffee. So what we do at OHO is we create something that we, we call a project brief. And I know that these screenshots are pretty small and you might not be able to see all of the things, but this gives you an idea of what the information needed in order to have a project start. So in this case, um, we include links to all uh, Google Drives, um, to, the, to our Basecamp instance, to our development um, tickets, to our Smartsheet or our other um, timeline uh, project plan. We include all of the people on the project, all of the people on the team that is asking. So in this case, the client that is asking for the project and a whole project overview of what all of the requirements are and how we're going to get the project done and any other information. 
And when we have all of this information, having taken it in from the client and had this conversation with them and answered all of the questions, then we can bring it back to them and say, okay, does this look good? Is this what we're still talking about? Have we hit the, all of the things? And then with that approval, then we can say, okay, well, let's move forward. So every project is different. Absolutely. hundred percent. Even redesigns, they're never the same, right? but they can all be handled very similarly. So when you're going for that project brief or that initial meeting, when you're talking about um, what the requirements are going to be for that project, we wanna start with scoping. So what is the team asking for? What is the problem that they're trying to solve? And what is their budget? And if we're not talking about money, because obviously if you're working within the same um, institution, you may not be exchanging actual money, but perhaps time, right? What is the, what, how much is this going to take? What is, the, what is the bandwidth that this requires? And what is the client, we'll, call, we'll continue to call it the client. What is the client's timeline, right? Is there, you know, are they gonna come to you on uh, June, ninth and say, oh my gosh, I need to have this up on the website uh, by July 1st. Well, that timeline is a heck of a lot different than if they say, I need it somewhere sometime before school starts again in the fall, right? So what is their timeline? Is it hard and fast? Do they really have to get it done by that time? Is it a little bit loosey-goosey? Can we, can we say like, this is our proposed timeline? What do you think, right? Who's going to be part of the project? Um, and are there other teams involved? And um, and by other teams, I mean, right, if the if somebody from the president's office asks for something, um, but it has to do with admissions, let's get somebody from admissions in if they're not already part of that conversation. Let's make sure that they're part of that. Or if somebody from student affairs has something and you think that it would work, work really well with, um, you know, one of the departments, um, let's make sure that they're, they, they're brought in too. So are there other teams involved? And then finally, who's going to sign off on the project? Who's going to look at this at the end of it and say, yep, okay, we got it. It's all done. Finally set. Moving into tracking of the project. Again, each project can be different, but they all look very same when you look at this level. So tracking of the project, um, you want to outline the timeline, as I said, before the project gets started and gets approval. This is critical because especially, I mean, anybody who recognizes that we're going into summer and that it might be a little bit uh, more vacation heavy, perhaps, um, knows that if we get to a point in the project that's going to need some review and the person who would be doing the review is on vacation, that's not going to work so well, right? Because that person's not going to be there. And then all of a sudden the timeline's going to be out. So when you have the timeline, take a look and say, okay, uh, let's make sure that all the vacations are in. If somebody is going to be attending a conference or just otherwise, you know, if there's a board of trustees meeting um, and they're otherwise not able to do something for a series of days, let's make sure that we build that into the timeline as time that's blocked off that is not available because otherwise it's going to push that timeline out and push that project out. And what you lined up isn't necessarily going to hit because of these other things. And if we know these ahead of time, we can plan for them. It's when they pop up unexpectedly that becomes a little bit of a different issue. So we wanna also make sure that we set those expectations early, right? As we lay out the project timeline, whatever the case may be. And I'm, you know, I, I'm using a very broad look at what a project could be. I mean, this could be anything from I need to have a new program page on the website too. I need to make sure that the learning outcomes are on the website somewhere um, To I need to have some graphics made for this poster, whatever the case may be, right? It's it, it all projects, though different, very similar. Um, and you want to set those expectations early so that you have the idea. Um, I would recommend that you set up standing meetings. Um, and that you set an agenda for these meetings. You wanna make sure that the stakeholders know how important these meetings are. Now, you can set the, I, the path for how, fa how, or how frequent these meetings are. Maybe they're once a week, maybe they're biweekly, maybe they're once a month, right? Depends also on the duration of the project. If this is gonna be a let's get it out fast kind of project, you might need to meet you know, more frequently than even once a week, depending on what the timeline is. But you wanna make sure that your meeting has an agenda. And the reason why is because you don't wanna come in with all of the things and then 
at the end of it, you say, oh no, we didn't talk about this. And then you've run out of time, right? So make sure that you have the agenda and try to stick to that agenda so that you can get through all of the things. When we have our status calls um, with our clients and I work on the services side, so I work um, with all of, with clients who have um, support agreements with us. And so we work on a, a monthly, you know, a monthly plan with them. And we meet, we talk about what is happening in that month. What are the projects that are coming up in the next month or even beyond that? Um, what does our budget look like? Um, what other things might be coming down the pike? So set that agenda so that everybody knows what to expect and that the stakeholders know just how important these meetings are. Um, and if this, at these meetings, this is also a really good opportunity to start to discuss if things are going off track, you can address it. If you don't have those meetings and if you don't um, recognize that things are going off track, it can get really messy. So let's make sure that they are staying on track and address it early. Finally, going back to the scope. Um, so at the very beginning of the project, you find out, okay, what are the requirements? What are we gonna need? Who's gonna do what? What's the timeline? And then halfway through the project, somebody says, well, can we do this too? Or, you know, I was thinking, let's add. And the response can be, sure, we can do that. And that's a different project. So either we can do that after this project is done, or if you want to include that in this project, we'll have to reconfigure the timeline and the resources and figure out how we can fit that in. And if you have a specific deadline, we really need to make sure that that's going to work and still hit your deadline. Scope creep can be really, really, really tough, right? I think um, probably anybody who considered themselves a project manager when we had that poll can understand that at some point in the project, somebody's going to say that. Um, and whether you have an actual change order, you know, whether you actually write it up or if you notate it some other way, um, it, it could be necessary if you decide to include it in the project because you want to make sure that people understand if we include this, you're going to have to have a longer timeline. Okay, so another way that you can, um, the, 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 you can make sure that your, your, your work is working hard is to get ahead of the ask. So schedule a strategic planning meeting. Now I know I saw some chatter in the um, chat during uh, Rachel's discussion about, oh, you know, we set these strategic goals and then the wind blows and they change and we don't know and all of this. I totally get it. A hundred percent, I get it. You know, that's unfortunate um, and it, it, it can be really tough. However, if you have that meeting, and you document it. And if you, you know, put it on a board, if you put it in, you know, when we all were working in the office, I used to have this giant whiteboard when I was working in higher ed. And I would say, these are our goals. And, you know, when are we going to do this? And how are we going to do this? And I was in an op open concept kind of uh, office. And so anytime anybody walked by, they saw it. It was a good, great reminder. Now, I absolutely understand some of those goals might change during the year, but then you have it. Everybody knows that it's there. You know that if something else comes in, then something else is going to have to move out. You only have so many resources. But if you schedule that strategic planning meeting in advance of the ask, then you can anticipate it. So whether you're planning the year or the quarter or even the month, these meetings are a great opportunity to discuss any upcoming projects, any thoughts, any ideas you can brainstorm. And this can really help to build those relationships. And what I found too, is that when you're building those relationships is that it's not only beneficial for your team in the comms and marketing office, but it's also really beneficial for yourself personally, right? You, you now have somebody that you can call on in a different department and they know you, you're not cold calling them for some question. I knew people in the HR department because I worked on the website and you better believe that when I had questions about benefits or my kids going to the preschool, 
that I was able to call them and have those conversations. And those relationships are really, really important. So not just at the team level, but at the personal level. And it comes back, right? It's, it, it, it's a big old circle. If you have a good personal relationship, you're probably going to have a good professional one and vice versa. So a better way to say yes, don't have to be a robot. When we were um, talking about this presentation and, and what it could be and you know how to talk about project management, um, and even in the conversation about the uh, report that we, that we just heard all about, being an order taker can be really tough, right? Like you just, but I'm here to tell you, you don't have to say yes. So if you don't tell my boss, I won't tell your boss, but not all ideas should become projects. Now I'm not saying that not, you know, say no. What I am saying is that you can say, yes, and that's a great idea. Let's discuss it more. Let's figure out what the root of your issue is and figure out how we can come to the, the end of, uh, and, and figure out what we need to do. You don't have to say yes to what they're asking. You can say yes and. It's something that I've learned through my kids' elementary school, in fact. Yes, and I hear you, so let's talk about it more. And these conversations can be really difficult because there are some really intense people who are set and they say, no, it's got to be done this way and it has to be done this way. And you're saying, that's really not good for marketing or that's really not good for communication. So let's try to find another way that we can both be happy with this. But talking about the root of the problem can really help to find another solution. At OHO, we ad have adopted the EOS system. You can Google it. There's plenty of information out there about it. But one of the things that we do is IDS. It's identify, discuss, solve. So you identify the problem. It's a three to five word phrase. It's not even an elevator pitch. It's super short. You identify it. You discuss it as a team and we discuss it as a services team. So we have account managers, project coordinators, um, developers, uh, strategists, leadership, all of us discussing it as a team. And then we solve the problem together. And as a team, we're able to come up with a solution to that identified problem and everybody can feel good about it. This is a way that we don't have to say yes to everything. We have that conversation and we can move forward. So just don't tell my boss. I know that Jason's on here, but we'll just pretend. Um, so thinking strategically, um, again, you don't have to be an order taker. Um, you want to work to understand what this team's business goals are and help them with ideas to achieve that. So if they come to you and they say, oh, we need to have the learning outcomes on the website now, 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 now. It's so important for accreditation. And you're like, okay, that's great. Can we talk more about like, I don't think that this really do needs to be on the program page perhaps. Like, can we find out another way to do it? Cause that's not part of your business goal, right? The business goal of the program page is to tell prospective students about the program. It isn't necessarily to include the learning outcomes that is needed for the accreditation. Because anybody who's seen learning outcomes for accreditation, very different than any marketing com communication. Um, and then revisit scheduling a strategic planning meeting because that will help you in terms of getting ahead of that ask and not necessarily being put in a spot where you have to say yes to everything. Well, getting to work faster, everybody wants to work faster, right? Everybody wants everything done yesterday. So thinking about organizing projects. I have another poll here. OHO team, if you can help me out and launch the second question of the poll, that'd be great. What tools do you use? It should be the poll. Awesome, thank you. So if you wouldn't mind um, telling me what, and, and this is multiple choice. So if there are some here, um, great. I see lots of different folks answering. Wonderful. I'll give it a second or two more. And we're going to close the poll in three, two, one. Here we go. Okay. 
So at the time that I closed the poll, thank you all for everybody who is on that. Um, we have about 50% using Teams, um, 46 using Slack. And again, this is multiple choice. So we know that you know multiple teams use multiple things. So we got 46 using Slack. We've got 30% using Basecamp, 25% Trello, 14 Asana, 9% um, using Airtable and 15% none of these. Um, none of these I recognize could be that it is that you don't have a system or that I didn't list it. Project management tools are, there are so many, right? There's like a bajillion out there. And so I, I tried to pick some of the, the um, more common ones that you would hear, but there are definitely so many. My recommendation, and it's great to see the output on uh, that poll. Get it out of email, make it transparent. You can sidestep some of the questions from your stakeholders, from your, from your clients of, well, when are we gonna do that? Or who do I need to talk to about that? Or where can I find that, right? If you can put it on one of these other platforms, um, whether it, you know, we use Basecamp a lot. Anybody who's a, a client would know that we use Basecamp a lot. Internally, we use Slack. Um, and we have other uh, methods too. In my old job, um, we use Trello, um, but getting it out of email so that everybody can see it and being transparent can be really helpful um, because again, it also shows if somebody says, hey, I need to do X, Y, or Z as well. Or if somebody says, um, oh, by the way, I decided to take vacation for the next three weeks and I'm not gonna be here to review anything. Um, that's where we can discuss it, right? Um, and again, meetings should have purpose um, or people won't show up or recognize their importance. So um, as another tool of those meetings, I talked about the status meeting, making sure that there's an agenda. Um, you wanna make sure that any other meetings that you set in addition to that have purpose um, because otherwise people are just gonna say, oh, I don't really need to be there, um, even if they really do. So, Here's the toughest part, I think, of anybody who is working in higher ed um, and works within a, a department like concert marketing, where you have all of the people coming to you all of the time. How do you prioritize, right? Whose project is the most important? How, are, how do you decide that? I mean, yeah, it might be the president, um, but the president might be asking you to put something that like has nothing to do with the strategic goals of the university, whereas you've got five departments working together on something else that would help meet one of those strategic goals. So even though it's the president asking it, does that outweigh what that is? Well, you might need help. And this is where um, you might need to call on your VP or your, um, the, you know, the person that you report to. They can help with some of those politics so that they can have that conversation um, upwards as you're having the, as you're talking about the project um, at, a, at the next level down, um, because it isn't always straightforward, right? So, you know, I, I give the example of the president's office versus um, the department's and it, it, on paper, you might say, oh, well, of course, the president's office. But again, it might not be. So will this project also help their, that specific team meet a goal in the strategic plan, um, whether it be the university strategic plan or the department or, you know, whoever that is, will, it, will this particular project help that? Um, when is it due, right? If somebody comes to me now and says, oh, well, this isn't due until June, 2022. Okay, well, that's fine. As long as the project isn't going to take 12 full months, we might be able to push it out a little bit and put something else in front of it. Um, and are there any resource challenges? Um, are you going to get to a point where you say, oh, I really, um, we've got two projects and they both need a UX designer, um, but the UX designer is booked and we really don't know what else to do right now. So um, those are the conversations. Those, again, really hard conversations, but talking with um, your, uh, the person you report to, and then also talking with the other um, clients. And what I try to do first is talk with my internal team. So if we've run into um, an issue where there is some other project that's come in, um, whether it be with the same client or with a different client, but we need to do some finagling um, to make sure that that, pro that project that's just come in gets, gets done. We first have a conversation internally. Okay, what can we do? Which, which chess piece can we move 
um, our, our director of development, Akeem Williams, he likes to call it Tetrising. You know, what can we Tetris? Um, love the game and love his skills at it. Um, but what can we, what we, can we configure so that we can make sure that we can still do all of these things um, and get them done? And whether it's a team of three or whether it's a team of 30, um, those are the conversations that you can first have as internally, and then you can bring it to the client and say, okay, here's the issue that we're having. Here's the solution that we've come up with is, you know, what do you think of this? What's your feedback on it? Are you, are you okay with this? Um, if we move this, this deadline out by a week or two, is that okay? Um, and, and have those conversations. And again, you're continuing to build those relationships because inevitably they're going to come back to you because you're making your team and your work stronger and you're continuing to build those partnerships and focus on strategy. So show off those wins. When the project is done, you're already gonna be planning for the next strategic planning meeting when you're sending that follow-up from the last. And you're gonna seek out ways to meet up with your, or bring the team partners into conversations. Um, and by that, I mean, you're going to show other, team, or other teams on, within the, your institution, hey, we did this. Let me show you what we did and this is how we did it so that when they're thinking of their strategic plan and they say, oh yeah, you remember how you did that? And then you don't have to go back and reinvent the wheel and work across the department. So when one team wants something and you think another might want it, introduce those two teams, get them to talk. You know, maybe there can be shared resources. Maybe there can be shared budget. Maybe there can be shared something, right? We're always, always, always in higher ed looking for ways um, to, to save, um, you know, especially as, as, we come out of the pandemic and looking forward. I mean, this is this is big, right? So work across those departments. You can be the string that brings everybody together. And then just because I had to, one more time, right? So if you're a Daft Punk fan and you have it in your head, and now I'm sorry, because now it's going to be in my head all day, but you do it all over again. You replicate your process and you don't have to recreate your wheel each time, right? Even though the project might be entirely different, you have a structure, you have the scoping, you have the timeline, you have the project brief, you have, you talk, you know about the scope creep, you know the relationships, you've talked with people, you've gone across the university, you know, you've met with people face to face, you've opened their, the doors to using Slack or Basecamp or Trello, and you don't have to recreate the wheel. Folks are going to say, you know, oh, it was so wonderful working with comms because this is what they were able to do. And it was so wonderful. Um, and use that relationship um, that you forged to help position your team and just continue to work across departments. And that's what I've got. We have punked our way through project management. I appreciate everybody who is here today. Um, I am so glad that everybody was able to join and I am going to open it up and hope that uh, maybe there's some, some questions here. Yes, thank you. Thank you so much, Kara. That was awesome. Um, so please post any questions that you have in chat. Um, also note in the chat window, uh, my colleague Eric's been posting a couple of blog posts that also um, would be very uh, useful. The one in particular I love uh, on Project Manager's Day, um, I think it was last year, maybe, I forget that what year it was, but um, oh, this is what our, we, our team put together in GIFs, 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 a controversy, um, what they think uh, project managers actually do. And so it's a hilarious and lovely blog post. Um, so our first question, April is from Moorhead State is wondering, uh, will we get recording slides? So much good info. Yes, um, we are sending out an evaluation to everyone who's attended today. Um, and if you complete the evaluation, we're gonna send you the slides for my presentation, Kara's presentation, and links to the three lightning talk videos. So um, you'll be able to watch those again. Uh, Leslie's wondering what system do you use to create your project briefs? Yeah, absolutely. Great question, Leslie. Um, to be completely honest, we use uh, Google. Um, we, we're a Google company, Google-based company, so we use a lot of Google Slides, um, and this is actually a Google Doc. Um, but you could, I mean, you could, in theory, create a Google form to create to put all of that information in or have the the um, client put all of that information in feed it into the doc 
Um, and then when you're meeting and reviewing it, if there's any questions about what they've put in or anything that needs to be reviewed or um, anything that was blank, that's when you can fill in those types of things. But um, yeah, we keep it simple and we just use the, the Google Docs that way too. It also can be visible, again, the trans, um, transparency of it um, and not it, it just making sure that it's open. Jason mentioned in chat earlier <clears throat> that to tie back to your idea of uh, some of the earlier questions that was in my presentation um, about being strategic versus ser service oriented. And one strategy we've seen with schools use is an intake form or project brief, but not as just like a work order form, but as you were talking about, like in this project brief, using it to, um, to list the strategic priorities and ask the person who's making the request to tie it to our larger strategy. Um, Maybe I wonder if it, I know you also spend some time in higher ed too and work with a, a lot of clients here in higher ed. Um, can you talk about some uh, examples of some things that you've seen people request that uh, in, in this kind of a form that is what might lead a project down an unfortunate path <laughs> versus one that could potentially be a much cleaner, faster, more productive path? Yeah, absolutely. Um, I mean, I think that anytime you're trying to solve um, a, a, a problem or an issue um, with any sort of like stop gap measure, but not necessarily looking at the whole picture. It can be really tough. So one example that I can think of offhand is um, in terms of wanting to have like a staff listing um, and just saying, hey, can you, you know, make a, like basically a, a basic page so that we could put all of our staff on this. Um, but not necessarily thinking like how, el where else would the, that staff be uh, listed or where would it make sense? Would it, would it make sense to add them to program pages or department pages or whatever the case may be? Because if you're just building a basic page and you're manually entering all of that information, that is really hard to maintain. I mean, just think of like if one person leaves like taking all of that out but if you think about it strategically of okay where are the other places on the site where this could where this information would be useful and having that conversation um so that's one example um i think also coming back to anytime you want to have shared content across the site so you know just as another example of the same sort of thing um any news articles or blog posts you know we want to oh we want to add it we want to have you know three blog posts on this one page um on this one particular program page well does it make sense to actually have it on all of your program pages and then we can tag it and then based on you know so thinking bigger mm -hmm. um and not just that that one like that one page yeah Elizabeth's asking, is there any benefit to doing a Gantt chart? Projects get off track, that get off track usually are a people problem, not a tool problem. Yeah, absolutely. So um, we use a, a Gantt chart for our, um, for our scheduling and making sure that we include any time that um, people are off um, and really outlining what is going to be done at what point. Um, and it's super helpful, right? Because Elizabeth, to your point, it, um, it, it usually is a people problem. And I, you know, I come back to knowing when somebody's going to be offline and unavailable at the beginning of a project. I know, obviously, that sometimes things happen that are um, unfortunate and, and don't, you know, you can't plan for. Um, but the ones that you can plan for, um, those are, those are, re you got to, right? Because otherwise you're going to get off track. Um, so yes, we, I would be a strong advocate of Gantt charts. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and related to the people problem, I would say that, um, you know, one of the ways a project is more likely to get off track relates to uh, not making it clear upfront who needs to be involved in the process and who approvals need to come from. So establishing mm -hmm. that right from the start through your project intake form, project brief, creative brief, whatever you end up calling it uh, at your school and establishing right from the get-go who has to see this, who has to give approvals before it can go to the next step or be published or uh, whatever the final step ends up being. Mm -hmm. Great, any other questions from our group here today? Anthony has one. Would it be effective to be upfront with clients and encourage them not to all of a sudden want to add elements to the project? In other words, make it clear that once the project is going, it will likely be difficult to add elements. 
Anthony, great point. Absolutely. Um, I, I, I don't know how I would say no to this. <laughs> um, yeah, absolutely. If you, and that's why I, I say set the scoping at the very beginning, right? To, to know precisely, okay, what are the requirements of this project? Who needs to be involved? And make it really clear that if any of this changes, it's going to change the, the duration of the project. It's going to change when it's ready and when it's due and when, when you're able to use it. So um, absolutely 100% make that clear um, that, okay, th we have our project brief or whatever you're going to call it. Um, and this, this is our plan. This is how we're going to move forward. And if something changes from this, then we're going to have to change, you know, many pieces within this. Mm -hmm. Usually timeline. <laughs> you, absolutely. I mean, I, I don't know of, of anything that that could be added that wouldn't, I mean, might be only a day, but oftentimes it's much longer than that. <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah. um, Great. So Tracy's asking, how do you tackle clients that ignore your asks and questions, et cetera, mm -hmm. in order to begin a project and then ignore approvals? That is a really great question, Tracy. And so I think, um, you know, so many times we communicate online right first and that we send a message through whatever tool it is that we're using um whether it be Basecamp or slack whatever you know whatever that tool is um and you you might give you know people you, you send it once and then you send the follow-up a couple days later if you haven't heard from them hey just want to make sure you know did you check did you see it did you have a chance to approve it and then if they haven't approved if they haven't responded at that point I would um, send another message to say, hey, it sounds like you might be having some issues. Can we uh, schedule a quick call, um, a real quick meeting? Um, it, it, would it be easier for me to walk through this with you um, and, uh, and, and, make, and do that and make that an offer? Um, because I also have found that there are times when people just get overwhelmed by all of it. And so they're like, I don't even know where to start, depending on what the project is, even if they're the ones to have asked. If, if they don't know where to start, if you can say, hey, I'm happy to walk through this with you. Can we schedule a quick call? Or is there something else going on? Um, but after, you know, after that, if you haven't heard from them, um, I think notifying them that you're gonna have to put this on hold because you can't go, any, you can't go farther without, far, further without their approval. Um, you know, that, that is necessary for sure. And I see Anthony has a follow-up to what we were just talking about with him previously, um, have you had any problems with clients response to that, meaning uh, re requesting additional work or some some new added elements into the, into yeah. the project? I mean, when you've already set a budget <laughs> and they say, and you say, well, it's going to either, you know, and by budget, you know, whether it be hours or money and you say, okay, it's going to be this amount of money or it's going to take this long. <clears throat> and then they say, you know, well, I want to do this and you say, well, that's going to cost that much more or it's gonna take that much longer. Yeah, you know, it doesn't always fly, <laughs> um, but that's the opportunity to say, well, if you wanted, we can do that within this project, here's where it is. Um, if you wanna wait until this project is done and then we can make a separate project for that, we can. Um, I would say that the understanding is that you can always go back to, and this is why you can also document it, right? Go back to that initial project where you can say, well, this is what we outlined. What you're asking isn't included in that. And so this is why it's going to take longer or cost more. Yeah, absolutely. Great points. Okay, any final questions? I think we are good. Thank you so much, Kara. I really appreciate it. everybody. <laughs>